Hello, my name is Miranda and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing the There Are Ten But tag, which was created by Katie Books. Um, and I was tagged in it by um, Charlotte from Corny Reads because apparently Kieran doesn't love me um, because he didn't tag me, even though he tagged about 50 people in his description. I wasn't one of them, which is fine. It's fine. You know, I'm not salty at all. Oh my God, does this mean I can start booktube drama? Can I start beef? Can I start beef because Kieran didn't tag me in a book tag? <gasps> this is so fun. So basically the idea of this tag is that you pick a book um, that is excellent, a 10 out of 10, but it has a little caveat that you need to put before it before anyone can read it um, or you recommend it. So I'm just gonna go for it, try and make this quick because all of my, my videos are stupid long and I don't want them to be. Um, I say, just continuing to talk forever. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so first one is, there are 10 but they're over 500 pages. For this, I'm gonna go for, dun dun dun, drum roll please. Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. Um, this is a wonderful book. Um, book are long listed, book are short listed, women's prize short listed, absolutely excellent, um, about a fictional pilot um, and, a film being made about her. It doesn't sound like the most amazing premise, but the story and the writing is just gorgeous. Um, I loved all the characters. It's brilliant. It is over 500 pages. However, probably the quickest, I think it's 600 pages. One of the quickest 600 pages I've ever been through. Like it's so, so quick um, because it just, it just goes, like, it, not much, I say not much happens, there's an entire life. It's not like, you know, incredibly plotty, but you just want to know what happens. It's so engrossing. Um, and yeah, I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, and it's worth every, every page, I would say. I'm cheating on a question already because the next one is, there are 10, but it's an, on pre-order. Um, I don't really pre-order books. I don't really read books ahead of publication um anymore i stopped requesting books on netgalley because i couldn't keep up um i have enough books as it is um and i also i don't i'm not very good at keeping up with new releases um basically until people talk start talking about it after it's been released i don't know about it um so i don't have an answer for this but i might chuck in a couple of extra bonus ones for the like later ones um to make up for it okay it's a 10 but it's a red flag. For this, I'm going for Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, which is one of my favourite books. But any time that I talk to somebody about it and they're like, oh, I hate that book. I'm like, no, I totally understand. I also, you know, like I, 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 I totally get why people hate this book. I think it is a red flag book. It is a book that I think tells you something about the deepest darkest things in my soul um because I love it um <laughs> and I don't disagree with any of the things that people say when they say they hate it namely that it is incredibly melodramatic um all of the characters are horrible people um and it's just kind of ridiculous and over the top and all of those things I love about it I love it so much. Um, I know that the writing is ridiculous and it's all way too much. I don't care. In fact, I love that. Um, so <laughs> take from that what you will. But also I just, genu I do genuinely think it's brilliant. Like it's a gothic masterpiece, um, but also I understand why everyone hates it. I don't know who hates it specifically, but I feel like I've talked to a lot of people who are like, I hate that book and I understand. Next, it's 10, but it's over 100 years old. This also could go for Wuthering Heights, obviously, but I'm gonna go for a different one, which is Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. My God, I love this book so much. It's a classic. I don't, I don't know how you could think it's a bad book. Like the writing is some of the best writing I have ever read. It is exquisite. Like it's just stunning. It's so creepy. It's brilliant. It's genuinely a work of art. Every sentence in that book is a work of art and I love it so much. 
Okay, it's a 10, but it was studied in school. And for this one, I'm gonna go for A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. Um, again, this is another book where every line is a work of art. And I'm somebody who, I love books more from studying them in school um, because I'm a, a little nerd who loves to get into all the, you know, the detail and the munchy, crunchy metaphors and shit. I love that. Um, I'm like all about that. So but pretty much like most books that I read in school, I do, I do love. Um, and I have a very deep appreciation for. Um, but this one especially, I just think is impeccable. As a play, like you can do it in so many different ways, but also, and it's, and it's really compelling to watch, but it's also just amazing to read. Um, and I just love it. Um, other books that I read for school and I also love um, include The Great Catsby. Um, another book that I just think is impeccable. It might not be one that I enjoy reading like the most, but it is gorgeous. Um, and The Awakening by Kate Chopin um, is another one that I could have said for this. Um, all three of those I did for my A-level English Lit and I loved all of them. Shout out to Pete and Duncan for making those books enjoyable. You guys are the real ones. And lastly, we have it's a 10, but it will leave you with emotional damage. Um, again, there are so many books that I could say for this because most books that I read leave me with emotional damage and that's why I love them. Um, so we could say My Dark Vanessa um, by Kate Elizabeth Russell. We could say Summer Water by Sarah Moss. We could say The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. We could say I thought of another one, but I can't remember what it was. It's just gone out of my head. So the ultimate emotional damage 10 book is, in my opinion, not a little life, fuck a little life. It is The Death of Vivek O.G. by Akwaki Mezi. I will never recover from this book. When I was reading it, well, when I finished it in bed, I genuinely just turned over and started sobbing because it was too much for me. I couldn't handle it. This is a book about Virakoji, who, you guessed it, dies. Um, and you kind of make your way around in a, lots of different times, um, follow them growing up and follow their family, their friends, and kind of just get to know them as a person and then figure out what exactly happened um, when they died. And it is one of the most devastating books I've ever read. It's so beautiful, and so it's so like simple, the premise, but there's so much going on and it's just stunning. It's so stunning um, and it made me curl up in a ball and cry. So there you have it. Um, it's the, it's a 10 but tag. Um, thank you to Kieran for not tagging me in this. Um, here commences our booktube drama um yeah and thank you all for watching this um it was fun i might tag some people i'll probably forget also i don't know anyone so do this if you wanna i'll see you soon